Born in 1960, I remember learning about diversity and inclusion for people with different skin color. Growing up in the 70s, I remember learning about gender equality. And in the 80s, it was about understanding and inclusion for people with different sexual orientation. And in the 90s, our inclusion focus seemed to be on physical disabilities and passing the American for Disabilities Act. I'm not sure I paid much attention throughout. Fast forward to 2005. Twelve and a half years ago, I was introduced to a segregated population that before I knew very little about. People with intellectual disabilities. My wife Pam and I have three beautiful children. Our son Ryan, 33, and our daughter Brennan, 26, and Sean, age 12. Not long after Sean was born, I started learning about things like labels, barriers, ignorance, and yes, segregation. You see, Sean has Down syndrome. Now, I've got to tell you, I was a walking, talking poster boy of someone who had no idea how to act around someone with a disability. You see, growing up here in Savannah in the 60s and 70s in the parochial school system, we barely had exposure to people with different skin colors, much less any exposure to anyone with a disability. And because of that, I segregated that population. For the past 12 years, I've been learning, evolving, and challenging my vision of my son Sean's potential and opportunity and all people with so-called disabilities. I'd like you all to get a visual picture of the two boys I'm going to describe to you. You might even want to close your eyes to get a really good picture. The first boy is one of those super cute kids who's got a smile that lights up the room and a laugh that is simply contagious. He is one of the most active kids you'll ever meet. Horseback riding, karate, tennis, soccer, golf, basketball. One of his favorite things to do is to make basketball trick shots off the second floor balcony into the basket below. He loves the beach, playing in the waves, and the bigger, the better. He loves going to school. Well, really, he just loves being with his friends. As soon as you see the second boy, you know he's different. One look, and you think to yourself, is he Downs? If you get behind him on the stairs, you might get a little frustrated because he's moving pretty slow. If he speaks to you in the grocery store, you think to yourself, what did he say? Can I ask him what? Or do you smile politely and move on? If you see him playing basketball at the YMCA, you might think to yourself, oh, how cute. I hope they let him score. Okay, so here's your vision challenge. I've been describing the same boy to you, my son, Sean. The difference is, which one do you see? What is your vision of someone with a so-called disability? We have an opportunity to design our legacy of diversity through inclusion and acceptance for people with different abilities. And the key to this is vision. So here's your first step. People, children like Sean, have different abilities, not disabilities. If we keep saying disabilities, what is our vision? What do we see? If we see more in people with different abilities, we're going to want more, we're going to demand more, and you know what? We're going to get more. We have to challenge the vision of our schools. And when I say schools, I mean teachers, administrators, parents, peers, and parents of peers. We must champion every child to reach their fullest potential, the gifted and the not so gifted. Let's face it, if a gifted child doesn't get the extra help, extra work, extra challenge they need to reach their fullest potential, it would simply be unacceptable. Why is it any different for a child with different abilities? We must challenge the vision of our businesses. 
less than 35% of adults with different abilities are employed, mainly due to the misperception and low expectations by the employer. We all know, as business people, that the most important qualification you can have in a hire is desire and attitude. And it's proven time and time again, people with different abilities have the highest desire and the best attitude for their jobs. We must challenge society's vision of different, different abilities. If I was born in 1960 with Down syndrome, the doctors would have told my parents to feed me and put me in front of a television. They'd commonly refer to me as retarded. And if I was alive by the age of 14, more than likely, I'd been institutionalized. Horrible, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'd be better off. Because if I was conceived today and it determined in the womb that I had Down syndrome, I stand a 75% chance of being aborted. And that's simply tragic. Today, we are learning more and more the potentials and possibilities for people with Down syndrome, autism, and other developmental differences. We all commonly know the benefit of early childhood development for all children, but especially the benefit to children with different abilities. As early as three months, they are having physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and hearing therapy. They're learning sign language, sight reading, and much more. We're using vitamins and supplements to help improve cognitive awareness and development. Technology alone is going to play an enormous role in helping people with different abilities be a part of the typical world. We got smart devices, we got personal pay, we have biometrics, and soon we'll have driverless vehicles, smart homes, we'll have personal robots. Look at what's happening in the media. We have a television series now that's starring a young doctor who has autism. Movies are featuring people with Down syndrome and autism. The Gerber baby, 2018 Gerber baby has Down syndrome. Sesame Street has a character with autism. Comic books are featuring heroes with Down syndrome and autism. How do we make this happen? I heard a great story about a mother whose son has autism. And early in his academic environment, she was labeled as unreasonable because she demanded more for her son than the school deemed necessary. And because she was unreasonable, she carried that title with her through elementary, middle, and high school. And because of her demands, her son graduated from high school, went to college, graduated from college with honors, and is now working for one of the big four accounting firms. George Bernard Shaw said, reasonable people adapt themselves to the world. Unreasonable people attempt to adapt the world to themselves. Therefore, all progress depends on unreasonable people. You know, I missed out in the legacy of diversity in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Don't miss out on the legacy that we design for people with different abilities. And I'll leave you with this. The one gift that I have learned that people with Down syndrome have is that without hesitation, without reservation, and without prejudice, they can look at each and every one of us the same without judgment. Can we? Thank you.